Welcome to Western Wisconsin Journal. I'm Bobby Pominville, and I'm your reporter on the arts. And boy, we're going to cover a lot of the arts today because we are interviewing the executive director of the FIP Center for the Arts, one of my favorite places. And I'm so glad that I've gotten to know Ben. You have to say your last name. T.G. T.G. See, I was going to say it's it wrong. It's a lot easier than it looks. T.G. Yeah. I was going to say it wrong, and I decided that's, best to yep, ask Yep, that's you. okay. And we've talked a couple times. You've mm -hmm. been on the show before. That's right. And my goodness, this is the booklet that just came out. And really... If you want to review what's going on for the next year, I believe it's September through May? It goes all the way through June. Okay. Yeah, the last one's June 15th. Okay. Yep. You have to go get one of these, or I believe they're being mailed out, correct? Yep. This this one that I have yeah. right here came to my house. So, yes, there's some okay. have been mailed out. It's uh -huh. also on our website, too. Yes, yeah. and I have been to the website. And it's very, very easy to get to it and to review everything. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I was really interested in it. But the cover, first I had to mention this to you. Your graphic designer is amazing. Yep, he's a good guy. That cover. Uh -huh. And it's got so many of the things inside, just little snippets and so on. And, of course, I was looking and looking, but then I found contours. Yep. And I saw the first page is contours. Right away, right now, out of the gate. Now, why am I so excited? They came from St. Olaf. Mm -hmm. It was a group of guys from St. Olaf. That's right. Now, I will say it's changed a lot. Sure. And there's all probably all new guys. But at one time, they were at the Phipps. Yeah. And it was... A sellout, obviously. And I have seen them in different venues. I've seen them in Minneapolis. I've seen them in Stillwater at St. Michael's. Um, I'm a fan. I don't know how you couldn't be. I mean, those harmonies. Mm -hmm. I mean, can you imagine men singing in perfect pitch? Right. And, and then their music. You know, and they always challenge me. Yes. Especially to listen. But anyway, when do they come to the FIPS? They're here on January 26th of okay. 2025. So. And that is at 2 p.m. I like the mm -hmm, time. Mm -hmm. On a Sunday. A lot of people are going to love that. I know I am. Yeah, me too. And so, yes, I'll definitely be there. But, I mean, they've gone probably gone quite a ways since they were here and since I've heard them. And they're probably traveling, um, I don't know, all over? I would think so. Yeah, they're nationally known. So They're national yep, now. Yep. And they don't have a director or a conductor? <clears throat> um, I, not that I'm aware of when they perform, right. Yeah, yeah, I think they just are self. All right. So anyway, um, I just had to tell you that one time a bass came here that I had met at after the Minneapolis event, we were at the U of M club, and uh, some of them were invited. They all were invited, but here came this bass, and he was so nice to talk to, and he said he would come over and interview with me. Oh, very good. So I was, that was one of my favorite interviews, <laughs> you know. But anyway, it was such fun to talk to him. I and bet. I don't have any idea what kind of music they're going to do, but they usually have a variety Correct? Yep. Yeah, I think that's right. And I, I say kudos to you for getting them. Well, back I, we're to so, Hudson. so happy that they're coming back. Oh, yeah. I'm just, mm -hmm. I'm just so excited. <laughs> and I think January is a wonderful, wonderful time. Yeah, it'd be good. Something to spice up the, uh, the winter month. Well, anyway, are you in your first full season at the Phipps? Yes. Yeah, so I've been there just over one full year. That's so, um, you know, this current season, some of the, most of the theater stuff was already s set when okay. I arrived. Okay. But the rest of it, I had a hand in selecting. So, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. <gasps> and I've already told you it's outstanding. <laughs> but anyway, um, you know, we're going to think about going through some different uh, media. 
different mm-hmm. types of things. And I do want to start with drama. Sure. Because we are a theater. And I was wondering, could you recommend two or three things in the drama? Sure. So the first thing that I would mention is probably the drowsy chaperone. Have you heard of this this one? No. Bobby. This no. is a musical. But that name. And it's right around the corner. It's in September. In fact, we're auditioning for it uh, oh my today. So today? Ye- yesterday and today are auditions for The Drowsy Chaperone. So it's right around the corner. It's our fall musical. Oh. It's a big Broadway musical, but it starts kind of small. It's in a, um, a man's small apartment, and he's feeling kind of down, a little bit blue. And so he says to perk himself up, he's going to put on the record of one of his favorite musicals, which is called The Drowsy Chaperone. He puts it on, he starts playing it, he asks the audience if if they'll indulge him, and then he puts the record on, and then as it plays, the musical comes to life in his apartment. It's wonderful, it's funny, it's sweet. Um, you do, this is definitely one you don't want to miss. Okay. Um, so that would be the first one that I would recommend. The second one, um, there during the holiday season, we've got this show called Prancer. And this is, now if you know the FIPS, you know we have different arts councils, right? We have um, every dif- d- different discipline has its own council. Well, Prancer is a collaboration between Drama Council and Children's Theater Council. So they're getting together and they're doing a collaborative production called Prancer. It's about a young girl who um, her family has fallen on some rough times and she discovers a, an injured reindeer in her yard and she's convinced it's Prancer and it goes from there. It's wonderfully sweet. It's perfect for all ages um, during the holidays. So that's, that's definitely one you don't wanna miss. I like that mm-hmm. because I like it when it starts out with the young girl or boy. Yes. That draws me in. It's gonna be a great one. We're excited about that. And then we have something really special, a little collaboration with the Minnesota Fringe Festival do you know the Minnesota Fringe Festival no. at all? So this is a festival that happens in the Twin Cities every August for 10 days. Okay. Um, a lot of little tiny shows. Anyone who wants to can put their name in a hat, and then if their, if their little lottery number gets, gets pulled, they can do a show, whatever they want it to be. Stand-up comedy, dance, theater, whatever they want. Um, and it can't be more than an hour long. So we, we are going to, the FIPS has um, partnered with the Fringe, and we're going to select five of our favorites, and we're going to bring them to the FIPS for a little Fringe encore. So they're going to finish the festival in Minneapolis, and then five of our favorite shows oh. we'll bring over to the Black Box here at the FIPS. So that's like going to be really that. fun as well. So right now you can purchase tickets to those, yes. but you don't even know what the shows are yet because the festival hasn't happened. So it's kind of an exciting little, uh, it'll be a little treat for August. That's okay. Yeah. I can can do that. That's that's fine. Yeah, yeah. No, I just, I I had never heard about that uh, group or whatever it is. It's just a festival. And you've got some really new things going on here. Yeah, there's a lot of good, well, Silent Sky, of course, is coming. That'll be in the black box. That's a wonderful drama, sort of a romantic drama. Um, I actually had that on my list. That's a good one. It's yeah. a very good play. It's a woman astronomer. Yes, Henrietta Leavitt. And it goes Levitt. back to the 1900s. That's right. Yeah, and I, I'm into that. Yeah. I like that stuff. It'll be good. It'll be All good All right, one. so now are we, can we do children's theater now? Of course. Okay. Yeah. Let's do it. It's next. <laughs> yeah, so we've got three great productions coming uh, for children's theater. We've got Transylvania which is coming in October, sort of to hit that, um, that Halloween time period. Oh, that's and then we've got good. Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Yeah. That's coming in the wintertime, February and March. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to finish it off in April and May with Sponge, the SpongeBob musical, the youth <laughs> edition of SpongeBob musical, okay. which will be in our black box. So three really fun, fun shows for, for families and all ages. So we're really excited about that as well. So they're, they're all different ages of the children's theater. That's right. We've yeah. got uh, The Diary of a Wimpy Kid is our high school show. So that, okay. yep, those are the older kids. Okay. Yeah. I don't know these really well. 
But I love I love these choices. Yes, they're very they're nice. Very fun. Now I don't know if we need to do the dance company now, but I did want to mention it. Yep, it's there. Phipps Dance Company every single year, and that will happen in March, the twenty eighth through the thirtieth. So um, that's always a fantastic uh, event as well. So I have yep. been there mm -hmm. many times. And that's on the Potter stage this year. So it was in the black box this year. So oh, the that's Potter stage. Right this yes. coming year so yep yes and i like that because you know they have such wonderful dances and there's they can spread out yeah and i felt like they were squished <laughs> that's you know? right so they I'm need glad. all that room and i must mention the choreographers are tops of course excellent yes great yeah. tradition of dance here at the fit i love that Okay, what's this? Special events? Well, this is music now. Oh, we're in music. We're in music. Mo Pitney. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so you want um, just the sort of uh, so the highlights here? Lots of good concerts coming in next yes. year. Yes, yes. We, we start things off with Mo Pitney, obviously. So if you're a country music fan, <laughs> uh, Mo Pitney is your is your guy. That's, that's in August, so that's right around the corner as well. That's very popular uh -huh. here. Yeah, yes. Um, We've got, uh, on the next page in November, we've got a concert called I Am Woman, and oh, yeah. that's um, presented by Lori Dockin. Yes. And Lori is a, a really famed a Twin Cities music director in town and pianist. That name and is familiar. Yeah, she puts together some wonderful events, and she's going to bring in this one that she calls I Am Woman. That's uh, in November. It's mm -hmm. sort of a celebration of the divas, uh, Aretha Franklin, <laughs> Whitney Houston, Joni Mitchell, etc., and and that'll be just a, a great time. And yes. then, of course, we've got our holiday traditions. We've got the brass and organ holiday with the Twin Cities Trumpet Ensemble coming. Um, yes. That's that's always a fun event. And then followed up with Colleen Ray and her New Year's Eve spectacular. I've been to that. So that's going to be fun. And I have to say, Bill Chenard, I've been to his church and heard him play. It's it's just outstanding. It's so excellent. And I really enjoyed it because being Lutheran, singing all the liturgy with him, He's and then wonderful. improvising on the hymns. That's right. We are very lucky to have Absolutely. him. Absolutely. And he's such a nice guy, too. He is yeah. nice. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree yeah, with we're you. We're excited to have him back. Okay. Um, lots of other stuff, too. I don't know how much you want me to hit all these, Bobby, but I'll just keep talking. I mean, we've got the Andrews Sisters yeah. event coming with Jen Burley Bents. I mean, that's gonna be a fantastic time. Yes. One of your favorites, the Cabaret Night at the Fitz. Yes, it is, um, I'm, I'm going to those. Yep, we'll have three more of those in September, February, and May. Uh, the Twin Cities Gay Men's Chorus is coming in June. Yes. And then we've got our organ series again. Yes. So our organ series is comprised of three organ events. The first one is in August, and it's called Hooray for Hollywood, featuring Mark Herman. Mm -hmm. Mark is an outstanding uh, theater organist, so he's coming oh, and he'll play okay. all sorts of different musical, uh, musical movie musical classics from The Wizard of Oz, Willy Wonka, um, etc. Then we've got uh, Dennis James coming back to accompany a silent film. This one he's gonna do is Sherlock Holmes. Oh, I love that. A, 1919, a 1916 silent film, film version of Sherlock Holmes. I love it. So he's coming in October, just in time for Halloween season. And then the third one of the series is all the way in June, a year from now, uh, with David Wickerham. He's gonna do a Wurlitzer Red, White, and Blue Spectacular, which sounds so fun. That, the music in that is so appealing and loved by so many people. Oh, absolutely. That is a real, uh, I just think my husband would like it too. I think so too, and that's, yeah. it's Father's Day, so. It's you know. perfect. Yeah, Gershwin, Berlin, Cole Porter, uh, you, you can't beat, you can't beat it, so. Yeah, yeah I, I, just some wonderful stuff. I didn't even mention Philip Daniel. Philip Daniel is a, a pianist oh, yeah. who does some really interesting stuff with. Uh, yes. Uh, Piano and I did read about him, but I, I'm not aware of him. He's but. very interesting. He'll be in our black box. That's that'll be a really unique uh, musical event. So, which yeah. is so many good, fun concerts coming next year. I'm really excited about all of it. So now, tell me what kind of music he plays. Philip Daniel. 
Yeah, it's kind of pop. It's kind of a mix. He'll a do some he'll do some traditional piano stuff. Okay. But then he also does some sort of electronic stuff where he'll oh. play the piano and then he's got some technology that sort of loops it and creates a a new song just from the playing of his piano. So oh. yeah, some really interesting stuff going on there. That's that's something unusual we haven't had. Yeah, it'll be unique. I do like it. Yeah. I like I'm it a lot. I'm excited for that. Oh, so much. So much. And more. Yes. So we really have to, um, you did a really good job telling about everything. Well, thanks. So this book was really, now we have another big, big part of the theater is the art. Mm -hmm. And I really need us to talk about that. Now we do have five galleries, right? Uh, we have six galleries. Really? Yeah. Have we added one? Well, we've got one, two, and we've got the Riverview, Atrium, yeah. Overlook. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right, five. Okay. <laughs> well, anyway, I was, I was just going to promote that because, and some people don't, for some reason, don't go upstairs, and they've got to. Yes, and absolutely. And that, that River Overlook one. The Overlook one is so such a nice... Little that's, spot. That's been a, a real beautiful mm -hmm. place to be there and, and doing homes. Now, now what I wanted to say was that's juried art. That's right. And then they do the high school art in May. Yep, they do the high school art in, uh, let's see, yes, April, April and May. April late, and May, late April. because that's like the end of the school year, so mm -hmm. it's perfect. And I know it's a real kudo to get into that show. It's such a fun show. Yeah, yeah. there's so much fun stuff. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I was going to interject, if I could. Sure. The enriching arts. Yes. Because I have been in many places where they are, including Croydale and Bayport and, and yes. uh, Hudson, of course. I've been up there a couple times with the art, and it's added so much to those places. It's It's very important to us it to is. keep those relationships strong. So, yeah, yes. we love it. Yes. And it gives our artists more opportunities as well. So, yeah. yeah, I think that's one of the things that I really like about the FIPS is that they're going out to places where people wouldn't be able to go to a show or view the art. But I love that you're doing that. So it's, good. It's, We're yeah, that I, I think that's a wonderful program. All right, so are we up to the part now where you tell us how to buy tickets? Sure, yeah. Um, yeah. Do you want to talk about special events at all? Oh, I do, excuse Just, me. Uh, we only have a few, so Please go it won't ahead. take too long, but we've got um, Stand Up Junior is coming yeah. back. Do you remember yeah. Stand Up Junior? So that's a fun event. There, that's a series that's going to happen in September, January, and June, and that's a situation oh. where um, it's, it's a family event where we bring in professional stand-up comedians and they do sets for little kids. Oh so if you have a little kid who likes jokes, likes to be silly, it's perfect for them. They come and the stand-up comedians do their jokes for the little kids, <laughs> and then at the end, the little kids get to hop up on stage and one at a time tell a joke into the microphone. It's, it's a blast. We oh did it, my. We did it one time last year and it sold out and it was such a fun, afternoon. Um, so we're going to do it three more times this year. It's a nice, um, inexpensive event, only $15. Um, bring, the, bring the whole family. It's a fun time. That's amazing yeah. you do that. And then we've got the Mysterious Old Radio Listening Society. Yes, yes. So this, this is a group that brings um, sort of old golden age radio dramas to the stage, mm -hmm. so they come and you get to watch them do all the sound effects live, and they're actual golden age radio dramas that aired on the radio, so, and which is fun because some of them are so weird and silly, and but this one, <laughs> they'll be a little spooky because it's taking place October 27th, oh. so they're in for Halloween, but spooky, golden age radio version of spooky is not exactly the same as what we would think of as spooky today. It's a little more tame, but it's it's a, I've seen them live a couple of times and they are so much fun. So I, those are I and then we've we've got Kick the Bucket List coming back um, with the ladies' room. So some comedy there that's coming in uh, January. Yes. 
and then our puzzle game's coming back too. Okay. The show must go on. So lots of special events. Oh, yeah. A chuck full season, so. And when we get to it, I was going to thank you for doing Community Day. Yes, that's that coming was back first. as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to do that again. That was such a big hit last this it past was. year. Um, we had so, I think we were expecting maybe 20 some people and we had just a, so many people showed up. Yes. So I, we're going to do I that like again that. And, and make that an annual event for us. Yeah. And backstage tours would, mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of people would like to see that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's a, I, it was fun. I, thank you for adding that of course. last year already. Yeah, it's, it's a fun way to sort of connect with the community. It is. Yeah. People loved it. It was fun. We loved it. We had a great time as well. So, yeah. Yeah. So that's the season in a nutshell, Bobby. Wow, yeah. look at that. Chuck full. Lots going on. I was enjoying that book. I had to look at it three times. <laughs> then I wrote down the things I was interested in. Uh -huh. <laughs> so right. I could get over there and get my tickets. Yes. Yeah. Now, how to get the tickets. And I know you've got some wonderful deals. Oh, we sure do. Yeah. Um, so first of all, if you have one of these handy dandy yeah. brochures. This is really easy. Um, then you just, you know, you can, you can just write your order down on our little order form here, mm -hmm. and then just mail that into us. Or you can call us to the yep. box office number 715-386-2305. And that hasn't changed for years. And that hasn't years. changed for years. So just give us a call and we can, you know, uh, help you out with tickets. Or you can visit the FIPS in person. Or obviously our website is there too, the FIPS.org. Um, all of that is available on online. And of course, we've got our subscription packages. You can get a, th yes. a package of three events, right. five events, or seven events, and you're going to save a bunch of money. And the pricing is unbelievable on those. That's the way to do it. If you that is the way to go. If you want to see even two shows, you should probably just get a third and get that package. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree with you. So, that's the best way to do it. No, we have children's theater packages as well. Three show. You can yes. get all all of the children's package, uh, all of the children's shows in that package as well. So, yeah, it's. I mean, we. I think we make it pretty easy. We try to make it pretty easy. You but, do, um, and this. I've always done the three. Yeah. And and occasionally I'm going bumping up, but I've always done at least the three. Is what I wanted yeah, to yeah, say. Yeah, for sure. Well, there's so many things to go see. There's something for everyone in this season. So actually, the prices are. It goes from 16% off to 33% off for seven shows. If you get seven, if you get the seven show package, you're paying 33% off Man. of what you would if you got them individually. So That's amazing. <clears throat> it's a it's a great savings. It's it priceable really mm -hmm. for people. Absolutely. Yeah. Especially in today's day and age where everything seems to be a little a little more expensive than it was. Yeah, but that's this, the big word all the time mm -hmm. you hear. So, But not if you get a package. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So very easy to do. And I like this back page, too. Yeah, the, this is because, a good little handy order form. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. So if you don't have this, from my list. stop this by the really FIPS. This is really important. Stop by the FIPS and grab one of these guys. Yeah, yeah. And uh, first I looked online. I thought, oh, I really want to have it in my hands. Yeah. So that's why I went it's, down to get it. It's good to be able to leaf through it. It is. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, this is going really fast, Ben. <laughs> All right. Next, we've done the tickets. We may have forgotten something. I hope not. But anyway, how can people volunteer? Oh, it's yes. It's really important to... I love to do that. It That's... might be the most important thing, you know. Yeah. We're the FIPS is a nonprofit. It, you know, it needs the help from its community to survive and to thrive. That's right. Um, you know, so outside of the just attending events because that helps support the FIPS too. But outside of that, if you want to be a volunteer, the best way to do that, there are two two ways. Number 1, give us a call call our box office and say, I'd like to volunteer, mm -hmm. and then we can help you out there on the phone. Mm -hmm. Or number two, you can go to our website at thephips.org. There's a link at the top that says Get Involved. Oh, yeah. And if you click that, 
um, there should be a volunteer area as well that you can click on. Mm -hmm. And then we have, we're, we're starting a new volunteer system where um, you can just sign up and then you will get an email. You can sign up and sort of tick the boxes of the things that you like to do or might have an interest in doing. Yeah. And then whenever those things come up, we shoot you an email and say, would you like to volunteer for this specific thing? Okay. Right now, there are a couple of, of volunteer events on there. Um, I think walking in a parade, um, walking maybe in the pepper parade. Oh, and really? Booster days. Yes. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. so we need some parade walkers. So that's, yes. that's right there. You could sign up for that right now if you wanted to. So, yeah. Yes, and I've seen that because I go to parades. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but there are a lot of other areas where we use yes. volunteers too. So yes, so many different things. And if you're not sure what you might want to do, then I would suggest coming to this FIPS Community Day. Yeah. It's happening next April. Yes. And then you'll get all sorts of information about, about what we do and the volunteer areas that we need help in. So yeah. Yeah. Or just give our office a call. Okay. Yeah. Boy, you make it really friendly. <laughs> um, now, I did something last year that I never would have done, ever. Uh-oh. I was a stage manager for the Gay Men's Chorus. Okay. And I just really, I felt so important, and I felt like I knew what I was doing, and there were very few things to do because they would tell me from the booth. Sure. But here's what I found out. They were the most polite, wonderful guys. Yes. And I went in and said, well, I'm Bobby, and I'm going to be your stage manager. And they would say, they would come to me and say, hi, Bobby. Mm -hmm. And, you know, pretty soon it was like, yeah, that was like we knew each other. Best friends. And they were so polite in thanking me yes. for what I was doing. So I just felt the connection. That, they're a wonderful group. They are. Group. Yeah, and they're, the, the, the show that they put on is fantastic as well. That's right. So they're good people, but also yes. the show is very entertaining. So we can't wait to have them back. Yeah, Yeah, and I'm so glad they're on the yeah. uh, docket again. But here's what I was wanting to say, is that I was expecting a nice vocal group, and I wasn't expecting the top of the line, and I was blown away. And they have like a ensemble group too, yep. and a couple different smaller groups. But I, I really have to say their harmonies. It was very polished. Yes. And I really have to say I, I would just recommend them to anyone. Yeah, me too. They know what they're doing. So I found out. You know, I worked in the light booth too, but I just felt like I had such a connection. That's great. Yeah. Well, thank you for volunteering, too. Yeah. That's and I love thing. to volunteer down there. It's fun. You learn I something new. I enjoyed it. And you meet some new people. And you, you know, sitting kind of at the <clears throat> back of the stage there, not the back of the stage, but near the uh, entrance to the stage. Sure. And just to encourage them and say, oh, go do it. Go break a leg or whatever. And it was just something I had never done before. It's a blast, and you yep. get to see the show for free. You do. Yeah. That's another plus. Yeah, and from a, an yeah. interesting perspective, too. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I, I hope we've covered it all now. I think we have. I think, I think we did. I a... had to make a list because I, I wanted to make sure we got, there's so much. There's just a ton. There's so much. A ton. And you know what? You, I have to say, you're doing a fabulous job. Well, thank you. We are very lucky to have you. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I'm lucky to be here. And I know um, I appreciate you, and I appreciate the work you're doing there. Thanks, Bobby. And it's really nice to see some innovation. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. We're, we're doing our best over there, you know. We sure are. There's a lot to get done, but we're doing our best. Yes. So anyway, I hope that this will encourage people. So I do want to thank our audience, and I hope you're inspired. Call the FIPS or, or get a brochure and do whatever you can. I mean, you could go down there and look at the art galleries, and then you could get your brochure that way, too. 
But anyway, I hope you are inspired to get some tickets and enjoy the offering of the FIP Center. And it's the most beautiful location you could have on the river. And I think you could visit the town of Hudson too. Maybe get a bite to eat. So please, please do it. And thanks for watching my show. I appreciate all that. And you could email me if you have any questions.